Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today I want to talk to you about the difference between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. And what we're going to do is um, I'm going to teach you the differences between these two conditions. We're going to talk about uh, how they present in terms of their symptoms. We're going to talk about what happens to your lab tests if you have either of these conditions. And then lastly, we're going to talk about some conditions that cause or medical conditions which lead to either of these states. Um, so let's jump right in. This is uh, The reason I'm doing this video is because there seems to be a lot of confusion between uh, these two conditions. Um, and there really doesn't need to be because they are they actually represent the complete opposite of one another. And so, uh, well, let's, let's, I'll explain this right now. So basically what happens um, is your thyroid can, can, one of three things can happen. It can produce not enough thyroid hormone, it can produce enough thyroid hormone, or it can produce too much thyroid hormone. Okay, and so that we have three names um, for each of these things. So if you're not producing enough thyroid hormone, it's called hypo thyroidism. Hypo meaning low, thyroid meaning your thyroid hormone, so low thyroid hormone. If you're producing too much thyroid hormone on the opposite side, it's called hyper. Hyper meaning too much. You know, hyper, you just think of people being overactive. It's too much. So hyperthyroidism means too much thyroid hormone. And then the third one means you're just in the middle. You're fine. Then that we call that euthyroidism or, or someone, someone is said to be euthyroid. And that just simply means normal thyroid function. So how do doctors differentiate between these conditions? Well, there's actually a lot of ways. Um, and one of the most important is definitely lab tests. But I think equally as important, if not more important, is how you present clinically, which means your symptoms. What are you experiencing? Okay, so, so these two things, the, the labs and the symptoms can kind of diverge from one another. Um, and we'll talk about that in just well, as we get through here a little bit, but I just want you to understand the basic, basics here. So generally what doctors do is they assess your thyroid with something called the TSH. And if you look down here, this kind of gives you a, a graph of a flow chart of how your doctor might be thinking about your condition. And so you're kind of, you're often stratified into one of two groups based off the TSH. And this can also be a point of confusion um, for people. So let me just kind of uh, demystify this real quick. So a high TSH, let's say you go to the doctor and you're experiencing symptoms like fatigue and weight gain and constipation. You go to your doctor and he, he, he or she checks your TSH and it comes back high. A high TSH, if you come down here, see so high TSH, is often associated with hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function. Now this gets confusing. How could a high TSH mean you don't have enough? Okay, and so you kind of have to just realize that that's the case. Um, I'm not going to talk about the feedback loops which cause this, but um, essentially what is happening is the if your thyroid is not producing enough thyroid hormone, meaning you're low, your body responds by trying to kickstart the thyroid by increasing TSH. So it's kind of an opposite uh, sort of reaction there. But high TSH is often associated with hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function. On the opposite end of the spectrum, a low TSH is often associated with too much thyroid hormone or hyperthyroidism. All right, and the reason for that is the same thing. If you have too much thyroid in your blood, your brain is gonna, it's gonna sense that and it's going to respond by reducing the stimulation that it gives to the thyroid gland. And that's why your TSH lowers. So in, in a nutshell, that's essentially what happens. Now, it is more complicated than this, but this can really help you to wrap your mind around the difference between these two um, disease states. Okay, so let's talk about um, hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function. Now, what kind of labs would you have if you were hypothyroid? Now, first of all, we've talked about the TSH, so generally the TSH is higher. So I, th I tend to think a healthy TSH is somewhere around 1, so 1.0. And anything greater than 2.5 is definitely abnormal. But sometimes on the reference range, doctors say that anything greater than, than 5 or anything greater than 10, which is just very, very high, but sometimes they, they look at it in that way. But your TSH in hypothyroidism generally tends to be high. Your free T3 and free T4 tend to be low because your body can't produce it, so it's low. And of course, if, if present or um, if, um, if it's applicable to you, your thyroid antibodies may be positive. And if they're positive, that means you may have something called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And again, we'll talk about that in just a minute because that one's kind of an anomaly um, in that it can cause hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So what kind of symptoms will you have if you are hypothyroid? Well, first of all, you can see a list here, but fatigue or low energy, weight gain, cold intolerance, 
hair loss, dry skin, cracked or brittle nails, constipation or an otherwise slowing of the gastrointestinal tract, which also might cause things like acid reflux or small intestinal bacteria overgrowth or indigestion, things like that, pain in the joints and in the muscles, depression, brain fog, or reduction in mental clarity, and lower than normal heart rate or body temperature. Okay, so all of these things are associated with being hypothyroid. All right, so what, can, what kind of conditions cause this? I have a whole list here. Um, so we'll just briefly go over those. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, which is an autoimmune, um, autoimmune condition of the thyroid gland, which causes this destruction of the gland. So if the gland doesn't work, obviously um, you're not going to be able to produce thyroid hormone and you're going to be hypothyroid. Um, pituitary or hypothalamic damage uh, or tumors. So these are things that affect your body's ability to produce TSH. If you've ever had your thyroid removed or if you've had it destroyed by radioactive iodine, that can cause hypothyroidism. Some nutrient deficiencies, uh, excessive intake of goitrogenic foods and substances. And all, each of these is its whole deserves its own um, video here, but I'm just kind of going over these so you have an understanding that a lot of things can cause this condition. Radiation to the head or neck, certain prescription medications, especially beta blockers, diabetic medications, or anti-seizure medications. You can be born without it, so that could be a congenital issue. Um, and then, of course, pregnancy can also cause it because pregnancy causes an increased demand on the thyroid. And if that's not met, the function will decrease. Okay, so that's, in, in a nutshell, that's hypothyroidism. Now, what is hyperthyroidism? We already talked about that. It's too much thyroid hormone. But how does that manifest in your body? Now, that generally manifests in a, in a completely different way as hypothyroidism. So instead of your TSH being high, if you, are, if you have hyperthyroidism, your TSH will be very, very, very low. Okay, Your free T3 will generally be high if your body is producing too much thyroid hormone. Your free T4 could be normal or high as well, but it may be just be easier for you to think about free T4 and free T3 as being high. Thyroid antibodies. So there is another condition uh, called Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune condition, which can basically overstimulate your thyroid gland and cause it to produce too much thyroid hormone. And so you can test for that. You can look for uh, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin and you can order that and it will um, help you understand what is causing your hyper hyperthyroidism. So what kind of symptoms might you experience? They're the exact opposite as hypothyroidism. So they, they include things like heat intolerance, uh, weight loss or increase in appetite, rapid heart rate or heart palpitations, anxiety or jittery sensation, insomnia, diarrhea, hair loss or cr cracked Oh, sorry, cracked, brittle hair. So um, both conditions can cause hair loss, hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. But in hyperthyroidism, it tends to be uh, dry and brittle hair. And then, of course, low energy as well. So what diseases cause hyperthyroidism? Graves' disease is a big one, probably the most common, and that's the autoimmune disease. Um, toxic multinodular goiter, excessive thyroid medication or, or dosage. Thyroiditis, which is an inflammation of the thyroid gland. And then, of course, certain tumors, but these are very rare, and they can actually just produce too much TSH and, and overstimulate your thyroid. Okay, so now that you have some basics, let me talk about some common questions that I get all the time, because I think this will help a lot of people. So can you have hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism at the same time? This is a complicated question, so it's better to make it easier. I'll, I'll just say this. The answer is generally no. You can't have, but you can't be both hyperthyroid, hyperthyroid, and hypothyroid simultaneously because that has to do with how much thyroid hormone is in your body. Now, what can happen, and what is perhaps confusing to some of you, is one of two things. Number one, you can have a condition which alternates between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, and those are actually fairly common. Things like Hashimoto's thyroid, thyroiditis and postpartum thyroiditis, and subacute thyroiditis and other inflammatory conditions of the thyroid gland can cause periods of hyperthyroidism followed by periods of hypothyroidism. Okay, so that's number one, and that can be confusing because um, maybe you don't understand what's happening in your body and your symptoms are changing all the time. That's probably what's occurring. Then number two is it's possible for some of the tissues in your body to have more thyroid hormone or less than others. Okay, so let me give you a perfect example of this. Let's say that you are taking thyroid hormone something like lyothyronine by mouth, um, which is a T3 medication, you're taking that medicine. Um, now, before the T3 gets to all the cells in your body, it's going to be absorbed into your, into your intestinal tract, go through your liver, and eventually will hit your heart tissue. And your heart tissue is sensitive to the T3 more so than other tissues. So if you take T3, you might get heart palpitations or feel a jittery or a flush or 
a rise in energy, and while the rest of your body may not get that same amount of thyroid hormone. So you might have some symptoms of that make you think you're hypothyroid, and it probably has to do with the tissue-specific levels of thyroid hormone um, in, in certain areas compared to others. But that's a very complicated complicated topic there. So I don't want you to focus too much on that, but just realize that it's potentially possible to have that. Um, so what's the difference between Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism? That's another big question I get. So Hashimoto's causes hypothyroidism eventually. Now, the, the end result of untreated Hashimoto's will be the complete and entire destruction of your thyroid gland. It's basically going to scar up and atrophy and it will not be functioning anymore. So Hashimoto's causes hypothyroidism. And the number one cause of hypothyroidism is Hashimoto's, which is the autoimmune disease that we talked about. So that's how they're connected. And then of course, is hypothyroidism more common than hyperthyroidism? Hypothyroidism is more common than hyperthyroidism. So somewhere between one and 2% of, uh, well, let's just say somewhere between, anywhere between five and 10% when you add everything up. Um, of people have hypothyroidism, whereas only about 1%, maybe to 1.5% uh, have hyperthyroidism. So if you're not sure what's happening, you're statistically more likely to have hypothyroidism, meaning low thyroid function. And is one worse than the other? Um, I, don't, I, don't think that, I don't think that you could definitively say one way or the other. I think the people who have it the most difficult are those who have had their thyroid removed or destroyed for any reason. It could be for thyroid cancer, in which case it would be necessary. Um, it could be the result of pretty much anything else, a big nodule or a goiter or anything like that. But once your thyroid is removed, it becomes more difficult to treat you with thyroid medication afterwards. So any condition leading to that might be uh, worse than, than the others. And then is Graves' disease hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism? Graves' disease causes hyperthyroidism. And it does that because the antibodies overstimulate your thyroid gland and cause the production of too much thyroid. Now, I also want to add one more thing here, which isn't included, and that has to do with um, determining whether or not you are hyperthyroid or hypothyroid based off of the TSH alone. And so what I will see people say to me is they will say, um, I'm hyper right now because my TSH is low, but I still have fatigue and I still have weight gain. I still have constipation. I still have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism. And that's, that's a problem because the TSH does not tell you whether you are hyper or hypothyroid. It's actually a little more in-depth than that. You need more tests than just the TSH. You need to look at your free T3, and you need to look at your symptoms, and you need to look at your TSH. So it is very possible for you to have a low TSH and be hypothyroid. So I know it's a confusing thing, but just realize that the TSH does not define the biochemical state of, of, of thyroid status in your body. It's, it doesn't work that way. It is absolutely possible to have a low TSH and still be hypothyroid because it has to do with what is the thyroid hormone doing in your cells and in your tissues? And that depends on more than the TSH. It depends on the amount of free and circulating thyroid hormone. It depends on the uh, cellular competition. Is thyroid getting into the cells? And it depends on thyroid conversion. So if it does get to the cells, is it being converted to the active T3 uh, thyroid hormone? So hopefully that dispels some of the confusion surrounding hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. Again, you really need to understand the distinction between these two entities. Um, but I tried to dispel some of the some of the uh, more confusing aspects of it. But if you have questions, please let me know. Leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them and, and get to all the questions. I'm going to try to answer every single one. So um, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please subscribe or, or, or comment or like. That, that's always helpful. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.